Before I begin with any kind of gameplay, let me ask you an honest question. How many of you even know that this game exists? Now, if you knew that this game existed way before Streets of Rage 4 ever to be released, then congratulations to you all, you are officially a Chad. Now, for those of you who didn't know that this game ever existed, well, you're about to find out why this game is the best Streets of Rage game ever. In fact, I will go all the way to say that this game is the best beat-em-up game of all time, period. Now, I've said it in my... First of all, welcome ladies and gentlemen, it's me, your lovely host, Profar, and this is Streets of Rage Remake Gameplay Video. Now, last time on Streets of Rage 4, I promised you guys that I will do a gameplay for this game. Now, before I begin with the actual gameplay, let me give you a brief history about this game. Streets of Rage Remake is a fan-made project created by Bomber Games or Bomber Link, which is a small studio in Spain. Now, they began development for this game way back in 2003, almost 17 years ago. They underwent an 8-year development all the way until 2011. So, 2011 was the year this game released. <clears throat> I'm sorry, this game released in its quote-unquote perfect state, which is the one that we're going to play right now. Unfortunately, two days after this game was released, free by the way, it's not paid because this is not an official Sega licensed game. So, anyways, Two days after it was released in 2011, Sega took it down because, according to, because Sega claimed that, uh, in their words, that is, we appreciate any kind of uh, we appreciate any kind of uh, fan-made projects. However, we need to protect our IP uh, from any other infringement, which is totally bullshit in my opinion. I mean, Sega is not doing anything with this IP on either than re-releasing uh, old ports to mobile devices, which is... It is what it is. So, Sega took it down because IP infringement, which I find it really stupid. Sega, in my opinion, should have hired these guys should have hired Bomber Games, should make a deal with Bomber Games and said, Hey, your game, uh, this game is actually really good. How about, I, how about we release it officially with our name, Sega, then you can also get the cut from its profit. I mean, I guarantee you, if this game was to be released back in 2011, this will sell way better than those uh, old games, uh, old games ported to mobile devices. Like, for example, Suicide of Rage 1, 2, and 3 was... Uh, were ported into mobile devices. If this game had an official release, let's say on Steam or any console, this game will immediate sell, immediately sell. It will sell millions, in my opinion. Even even if this game were was to be released today, I guarantee you, this game will sell. Still, in fact, I will bet that this game will sell better than Suicide of Rage 4. That's how that's how confident I am with this game. That's how good this game really is, it's great even. So, where was I? Oh yeah, Sega took it down. It is until 2017, around 2017, Sega give uh, the IP rights to Dot .emu and two other companies in France. And then, uh, they cre uh, Dot .emu and the two other companies created Streets of Rage 4, and then it was released this year. And all the credits, all the journals, all the... Uh, gamer uh, gaming community out there all praised how Dot Emu and two other companies revived the Streets of Rage game, revived the beat em up genre, which is not okay. As much as I like Streets of Rage 4, in fact, I give that game 4 out of 10. In fact, in uh, an even funner fact, I, I said in my previous video that that was my game of the year for 2020. However, this game easily tops Streets of Rage 4. If Suicide of Rage 4 was 9 out of 10, this game is a 9.8 out of 10. Last time I say 9.5, 9 I took that back. 
I give this one 9.8 out of 10. This is a near perfect game. The only thing that missing that is missing in this game is one, an online co-op because like I said, this is not an official game. It didn't have an official release. Number two is four player co-op. Okay, I would love to have a four player or even look at this. You have six characters here. A six player co-op like in the X-Men arcade game. I would love to have a six player co-op game for this game and online by the way because I just noticed that Streets of Rage 4 even though it has floor, even though it has a four player mode it cannot go it, it cannot have an online for it, it doesn't sorry it doesn't have a four player online co-op one which is totally weird I mean why bother having a online feature and a four player co-op feature and but not both okay so before we begin uh, with the character, I'm sorry. With the character select screen, let's take a look at these menus first. Now, as you guys see seen on the screen here, as you guys see on the screen, you have one player, two players, CPU friend. This is basically if you want to have a bot accompanying you throughout your adventures. Now you have your CPU behaviors that you can select here: balance, aggressive, passive, materialistic, and stupid. Usually. I go with balance because why the fuck would I pick the other, uh, the rest of the four, right? You have shop mode. Shop, I will. We will look at the shop after the gameplay though. Extra modes. You have battle, survival, boss rush, events, and volleyball. Volleyball is a very original uh, extra mode here, right, guys? <coughs> Tekken. Anyways, you have editors. You can edit your profile. You can edit colors. So, editing color is basically take a look at here. You have your characters, your playable characters, and then you want to edit uh, their colors, uh, their uh, the color for the sprites, right? Now, what other games, uh, or at least what other Streets of Rage game, allows you to do this? None. Only remake, guys. And then, name editor, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this. So, you got your enemies here, for example, Galcia, you want to change their names. Uh, Galcia, let's say I want to change it to, let's say, my, my name, Profar, I can do that. Or you want to change it to, let's say, Jack, or Joe, or James, or any other, um, any other jerk-off names that you can think of, or any other jerk-off in your life that you really hate and you want to see them get beaten up. You can do that in this game. And like I said, I asked the question, what other game, uh, Streets of Rage game, that allows you to do this? Absolutely none. Only on Seas of Rage Remake, ladies and gentlemen. AI editor, well, by the name, you edit your AI, or you edit the behavior of your AI. Now, let's cut the chit chat here. Let's go right into one player new game. All right, as you can see here, we have your character select screen. When you first start this game, you only have six characters, uh, which are the six characters in the top row. The rest of the characters are unlockables via shop. Now, I already unlock everything for this game. Well, uh, technically, I'm not the one unlocking it. I'm actually downloading the save file 100% because oh, I, I, I want to play the games I want to play, okay? Right? I, I, I gr Actually, I grind this game already twice back in the day, but I don't want to grind again, so I decided, yeah, I just... Uh, download a save file 100% so it is what it is so let's take a look at the characters here you got Axel now by default like I said in my previous gameplay this game follows Streets of Rage 3 instead of Streets of Rage 2 because technically in terms of gameplay Streets of Rage 3 is a better game than Streets of no it's is superior to Streets of Rage 2 an overall game Streets of Rage 2 is a better game right so you got Axel here which as you can see, uh, they use the Swiss of Rage 3 model, but in, for certain characters, you can change their models. For example, now, take a look at that. This is Axel from Swiss of Rage 1. And not only, this is the thing that I highly admire in this game, and highly admire Bomber Games for what they did in this game. So, not only did Bomber Games... Um, oh, sorry, what am I? What am I? What am I? <laughs> I'm losing words. So Bomber Games actually took the effort to redesign all of the sprites from previous game before Streets of Rage 3. For example, this this character from Streets of Rage 1, they actually redesigned their sprite. 
the sprite so that it will look consistent with uh, Streets of Rage 3. And not only that, they they don't they didn't only just took the sprite and redesign it. No, they actually add more combos for characters before Streets of Rage 3. They they actually have more moves set. For example, if you know in Streets of Rage 1 and 2, no characters can run, right? Characters cannot run. In Streets of Rage 1, characters cannot do a super attack, only a, a backup police attack, while characters from Streets of Rage 2 can do a super attack. So, in this game, Axel's Streets of Rage 1 version can do a super attack. And it, he can also run. So, like I said, they actually made more sprite, made more animations for the characters from the past or before Streets of Rage 3, so that it will play consistently with the other characters. Like I said, so unlike Doc Emu in Streets of Rage 4, you, you have your characters from 1, and, 1, 2, and 3, right? However, in Streets of Rage 4, they just took the sprite from Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3 without, without redesign it to make it look consistent with Streets of Rage 4's art artwork, and then they also played the same. So for example, you played Axel from Streets of Rage 1 in Streets of Rage 4, he will play exactly the same as you play in Streets of Rage 1 without any modification. Now I understand they want to go to the retro route, but like I said, this game, what Bomber Games did in this game uh, for this game, tops whatever Dot Emu did for Streets of Rage 4. If you disagree with me, that's fine. Blow me. If you agree with me, that's great. Okay, every everyone can make an opinion. Okay, I'm not gatekeeping. I'm not uh, disavowing or silencing anyone for having a different opinion. Okay. If you think Streets of Rage 4 is a better game than this, uh, so be it. It is what it is. That's what you think. Now, you got Axel from Streets of Rage 2. Now, as you know, characters from Streets of Rage 2 and 3 are not uh, are quite similar from one another. The only thing different is Streets of Rage 3 has the ability to run and 2 does not. In this game, characters like Axel from Streets of Rage 2, he can run. Okay, all characters can run in this game. Then you got Blaze. Uh, devote, uh, by the way, if you want to unlock Streets of Rage 1 and 2, you have to buy it from the shop. Uh, they're unlockable, so when you first play this, when you first play this, all of them, all of the characters are from Streets of are using the Streets of Rage 3 models. Okay, you, you got Blaze here from Streets of Rage 3, Blaze from 1, and Blaze from 2. Adam, again, which is my favorite character, and this gameplay will be, we will be playing as him. You only got the Streets of Rage 1 model, except it's redesigned. And his movesets are also uh, added in this game, like I said. And he, let me tell you, he has the best moveset compared to anybody else. He got Max from Streets of Rage 2, because that's the only model he has. But he can run in this game. Skate, you have model from 3 and 2. And Zen from Streets of Rage 3. One thing they, they add for Zen is that if you play Streets of Rage 3 or Streets of Rage 4 and then you use Zen, Zen cannot use any weapons in this game. Well, technically, he's not using, he can grab weapons, and but every time Zen grab a weapon, he will always change this weapon into a, like a light orb thing then, right? Like a light orb, and then he will use it by throwing it like a bowling ball. But in this game, though, Zan can use weapons. So, for example, when he, when he took a knife, then he will use a knife. When he took a baseball bat, he will swing the baseball bat. Okay, so he doesn't just change all weapons into a light orb and then throw it like a bowling ball. Again, another effort that Bomber Games took to make this game incredible. Now, take a look at the bottom row here. You got Mr. X. What other Streets of Rage game allows you to play Mr. X? None. Only this game, ladies and gentlemen. Ruda, it, okay, she's an original character by Bomber Games, so she's not in any Streets of Rage game except for this one. L, who is basically Electra, uh, a random, so a random enemy, right? Uh, you, your usual female enemy in Streets of Rage 2, but L has in this game when you play as L, she has different moves that move, sorry, move sets uh, compared to. The rest of the goons that has the same model. Shiva from Streets of Rage 3, actually you can play him in 3 and 4 as Streets of Rage 3 model. However, in this game, 
you can play Shiva from Streets of Rage 2. Again, I ask, what other game allowed? What other Streets of Rage game allows you to play this model of Shiva? None. Only in this game, ladies and gentlemen. Ash. He wasn't. Okay, he was a playable character in Streets of Rage 3. You need to unlock him. However, he did not appear in Streets of Rage 4. Probably, this is my theory. Probably because uh, Dot Emu wants, wanted to play safe and doesn't want to. Dot, so Dot Emu doesn't want to stir up controversy by making a character stereotyping the alphabetical community, if you know what I mean. And Rue from Streets of Rage 3. I ask in Streets of Rage 4, why the hell is he not playable, right? I mean, he was playable in Streets of Rage 3, why not? Why isn't he playable in Streets of Rage 4 with this model? I don't know. So, okay, you got. We've reviewed the characters here in this gameplay. I'm gonna use Adam, as always. I've said it once and I've said it again. If this game comes out at Steam, because I play, I mainly play it on the PC. If this game comes out at Steam for let's say 20 bucks, I will gladly drop money for it. Just add online co-op and if it's possible, six player mode. Sega should have, in my opinion, Sega should have given the Streets of Rage rights to Bomber Games instead of instead of Dot Emo and the two other companies. All right, now here's another feature that only Streets of Rage remake has. If you play any Streets of Rage game, one to four. Usually start in the first stage the exact same. Every time you replay the game, you will start at the same first stage and end uh, and end at the same last stage, right? <clears throat> I'm sorry. In this game, they took a branching path, uh, branching path story mode. So you can start in different points and then end in different points, and then the way you get there, there's a lot of route. Okay, so they. This is a very unique, uh, in my opinion, uh, not really unique concept, but uh, I love how Bomber Games actually added this concept because, like I said, this is a remake of the original trilogy. So, let's say, for example, you start on the first stage of Streets of Rage 2, Streets of Rage 2 and then end it in the last stage of Streets of Rage 1. Or you start in the state, the first stage of Streets of Rage 1 and then end it the, in the last stage of Streets of Rage 3, for example. Uh, to me, this is a good implementation of this game. So, and so, Dot Emu, uh, not not Dot Emu, Bomber Games. Sorry, Bomber Games actually added some uh, original stages in the, for this game. Okay, and I will show you some of the original stages. So, in this gameplay, we're gonna pick this one as our first stage. This is basically the first stage of Street of Rage 2. Usually, I like to pick this stage because of the music. One of the most iconic music in any beat em ups. You see, Adam can run and he can, he can also do a running attack like this. Very effective, by the way. You see that kick right here? Wait. I've mentioned in my previous gameplay that Streets of Rage, uh, in Streets of Rage 4, Adam does that. The only time Adam uh, does that kick outside of Streets of Rage 4 is in this game, right? Like this. So, I said that that move was taken from this game. And I'm positive about that. Someone in someone at Dot Emu or the the other two companies must have played this game. Same thing with the map earlier, right? The map looks somewhat similar to Streets of Rage 4's map. So no one's gonna tell me that 
no nobody at dot emo or nobody in the development team of uh Suicide of Rage 4 uh didn't play this game or does not know that this game exists. You know, I wish that a lot of people know about this game. Not many people know about it. They, they most of the gaming community think that Streets of Rage is dead after three, and then it 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 went back, it brought back in four. But this game is actually the true revival of Streets of Rage. Yeah, not not a lot of people know about this game because this is a fan-made game and a free game, right? It's not an official release, so there's not a lot of publications in regards to this game, or a lot of hype. Careful. I love how Bomber Games also remake some of the music. Or actually all of the music were remade by Bomber Games. Not some of them. And they, they sound really better by the way. They sound better in this game than the originals. I've read that some people said that this game sucks because it's a fan-made game, which is totally bullshit in my opinion. Like, if there, if it's a fan-made game and if it's a fan-made game and it's everything better than the original, then it is a better game, regardless. Yeah, so some arguments say claiming that this game sucks because they didn't make it from scratch. So what if they didn't make it from scratch? It's still a better game, technically and featurely. Fe is that even a word, featurely? But what I'm saying is, in terms of gameplay and features, this game has it all compared to the originals. So if, so why isn't that a, a parameter for a better game? If the gameplay is good, the graphic is better. The graph, uh, what else? The sound is better. There's a lot of features. Why isn't it a better game than the originals? <laughs> so, like I said, uh, as you see, I'm choosing a different path from Suits of Rage 2 just to show you guys a different uh, route. This, is a, this part is an original stage, by the way, by Bomber Games. Bomber Games deserve a lot of credit for this game. Like I said, the, uh, previously I said that the reason why Sega decided to took it down because they're petty. Well, I have a second reason because they don't want to share. If if Sega published this game, that means Sega needs to cut some of uh, its profit to Bomber Games. And as a triple A company, a greedy one by the way, Sega will never do. Sega want will never do that. Because they want to claim all of them, all of the profit for themselves, for themselves. Well, actually, a lot of uh, a lot of AAA companies think that way. All of them are greedy fucks. Not a lot of YouTubers as well cover this game. The only people that has, that, let's say, the only in YouTuber gaming channels that, let's say, have a, a lot of voice that cover this game is one, World of Long Plays, by the way. If you don't know what a World of Long Play is, they basically, yeah, by their name, they do a lot of long plays of mini games. 
So they played this game way back in the day. And the other uh, gaming YouTube uh, channels that covered this game is Top Hats Gaming. And I, I highly suggest you watch Top Hats Gaming, Top Hats, Top Hats Gaming's review for this game. Like I said, forgive my stuttering in terms of uh, commentary because, quite frankly, like I said in my previous video, my mouth works faster than my brain. Uh, you can call police as backup, uh, which is a feature from Switch of H1. But in this game, depending on the stage, the police can come via car or with a helicopter like that. And not all stages you can call the police. Usually in the last part of the game, you can't call any police backup. Okay, final blow. Oh, I missed. Come on. There we go. If I sound a little gasted or a little weird right now, please forgive me. I'm actually recording at night. It's it's around two o'clock at morning right now. Not really night, so it's a morning. Eh? It's two a.m. right now, and I'm recording. I usually like recording at night instead of doing it in the day, or if not night, earlier in the morning like this. Because there's not a lot of interruptions. These kung fu guys are quite... I was about to say quite dangerous, but... The better term is quite annoying. Adam's thrusting punch is super effective. Like this. Okay, let's go. Here comes the uh, here comes the toughest part of the stage, the train stage. Okay, outside of this game, where have you seen a train stage in Streets of Rage? In four, right? So you know where the train stage in four got his ideas from. Similar hazards, right? From Swiss of Oh damn it, I didn't see that coming. Can I call the cops? Oh, I can't call the cops here.
careful. Oh! Fuck! These ninjas are a pain in the ass. Seriously. They are the most annoying enemies in the game. They're basically the motorcycle Karens from this game. Except they're 10 times more annoying. This train stage, I feel like it's a nod to final fight. The first final fight. So if you ever played the first final fight and played the second stage of that game, this is basically it. The second stage of final fight one is the train stage. I'm basically taking all the hard, hard routes for this game because I just want to show you guys uh, the originality of this uh, game or the original stages. So, just to show you guys that th even though this is a remake of the original trilogy, it's not just a copy paste game from the original trilogy. The main reason why I put this game above Suicide Fridge 4 is that this game has a lot of features, therefore better replayability. Let's fight the boss. He 
He's basically a boss in Switch of Rage 1. The second boss of Switch of Rage 1. Streets of Rage. I can't even say that fast. <laughs> Alright, a little bit more. He's not that tough though. <laughs> 